Today, we're going to see if we can cut or toast bread with a laser cutter. This is part of a new series that I'm starting on my channel where I test materials that I've never tried before in my laser cutter. For this project, we'll be using three slices of bread. But before we start, comment below and let me know if you think the laser will cut through and engrave the bread. On the first piece, I'll be testing different settings to see if we can figure out the best one to get us a clean cut through the bread. Without getting into too much detail, I'll be adjusting the speed and power settings based on the simple idea that increasing the cutting strength of the laser is related to slowing down the speed and increasing the laser's power. As the material gets thicker, you usually slow down the speed of the laser and run the laser at a higher power so that it can cut all the way through. The tricky part is to find the right balance so the laser can actually cut through the bread without setting it on fire. To try and find the right balance, I'll set up a few straight lines with different speeds and full power. Who knows, the bread might just light on fire as soon as the laser starts cutting through it, but I guess we'll find out. With the project file ready to go, I turn on my Glowforge laser cutter, place a piece of scrap material onto the crumb tray, place the two pieces of toast onto it, and start the process of laser cutting and engraving. While watching the laser cutting through the surface layer of the bread, I noticed that the depth of the laser is based on the density of the fibers. If there's more fiber, it takes more power for the laser to cut through. Since bread has an organic pattern of fibers, the best way to cut all the way through is to use a power and speed that will make it through the most dense part of the bread. When the test was complete, I lifted the bread off of the scrap material and looked at the results. The first few settings look great for scoring and engraving, while the last two work for cutting. The last setting went all the way through without burning the bread, and the one before it was a perfect setting for toasting the edges, but it didn't actually cut all the way through. On the second piece, I'll be engraving an image onto the surface of the slice of bread. As an architect, there are so many cities that I love to visit, so I decided to use this illustration of Chicago that I found on a subscription website called Envato. It has a simple aesthetic and some of the iconic high-rise and skyscraper buildings of Chicago. I have no idea what settings will work to engrave the image onto the piece of bread, but I'll try one of the settings from the laser cut test as a starting point and adjust the power and speed based on what I learned. For this test, I'll start with the third cut setting that I use and repeat it again with the first and lightest cut setting. I also added a random outline around the graphic for the laser to cut out. With the file set up and ready to go, I start the process of engraving. I realized that the graphic had a lot of lines that were close together, so this slower speed setting led to the laser engraving deeper than I originally thought. If the lines were further apart, it would have captured the details of the building, like the windows and the materials, a lot better. But, one of the things I really liked about this test was the way that Chicago came out. Seeing the different ways that the buildings came out based on how much detail was in the building made me think about minimum tolerances for using bread as a material for laser cut projects. I wouldn't try to engrave lines closer than a sixteenth of an inch unless the goal is to toast the bread and create a silhouette of something. Anything larger than a sixteenth of an inch will show a lot better, like the building with the diamond pattern exterior. For the second test, I used the faster speed setting to see if I would get more details of the buildings with line space closer together. While running this test, I liked the brown color that the bread was getting from the laser toasting the surface, but the laser didn't leave a slight char on the surface of the bread to get some of the finer details that the first one was able to get. Everything blends together, so you get the silhouette of the skyline and some details of the buildings, but there isn't as much depth and clarity to the individual elements of the graphic. Let me know what other materials I should test with my laser cutter. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications for my channel so you don't miss the next one. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.